Olympic sister ship to Titanic and Britannic was the only ship to see a full naval career. The Olympics career spanned from 1911 to 1935 before Cunard White Star, who bought White Star Line that year, decided to retire the surviving sister. She was sold and scrapped. Some of Olympic's interiors were installed in bars, hotels, and the clock from the Grand Staircase is now at a museum. Once the life loss of the disaster became all too real, White Star Line chartered four ships from Nova Scotia to retrieve the lost souls who did not make it. All four ships brought embalming supplies, undertakers, and clergy, among other supplies. By the time the first ship reached the disaster site, the embalming supplies were exhausted due to the amount of bodies that still flowed in the ocean. Sadly, third-class passengers and crew were buried at sea and not taken back to Halifax. The captain of the Mackay Bennett and the undertakers decided it was best to only preserve the bodies of first-class passengers. This was to resolve any disputes over large estates. Bodies were taken back to Halifax to be identified by family members. Two-thirds of the bodies recovered were buried in Nova Scotia. Over the span of two months after the disaster, they managed to find just 333 bodies of the uh, 1,517 who lost their lives. The last was found on May 22nd and buried in Nova Scotia. She was only nine years old when the Titanic sank. Melvina Dean died at the age of 97 in May of 2009. Violet Jessup may have had the best luck in the world, or was it the worst? She was on board the Olympic when it collided with the HMS Hawk, the Titanic when she struck an iceberg and sank, and on board when the Britannic struck the mine and sank and lived to tell the tale of all three. Though the ship looks peaceful and majestic, it is still a place that should be respected. Amongst the debris scattered on the ocean floor are shoes, jackets, briefcases filled with personal possessions, all traces left behind from those who lost their lives on April 15th in the bitter cold of the Atlantic Ocean. One of the most powerful photos is two pairs of shoes. One pair is of an adult female and another smaller, perhaps that of a little girl. Both side by side, meaning they drowned together and that's where their bodies landed on the ocean floor. The reason why there are no bodies on the ocean floor are due to bacteria eating pathogens or fish. They eat the flesh, the bone, and everything else, but they leave shoes alone due to the leather context. But these pieces of clothing are reminders that the Titanic site is a graveyard, and more than 1,000 people who bought, whose bodies were not recovered, it's their final resting place. We then, to me, this was the most powerful image. This was, to me what set the tone for our expedition was when we, you know, when you're down there and you're photographing the bow and you're photographing the stern and you're photographing the boilers and everything's gigantic, gigantic, gigantic. But then when you go across the debris field, you come across these pairs of shoes. And this is where the human, people forget that after the Titanic crashed to the bottom, about a half an hour later, all the people that were in the, in the water were freezing to death. It took about 30 minutes to die in that cold water. And those that didn't have life jackets then came raining down. Hundreds and hundreds of bodies came like rain and landed all across the debris field of the Titanic. The animals quickly found them, removed their flesh, and the deep sea is undersaturated in calcium carbonate, so it literally dissolved all the bones. It takes about five years, but the entire skeleton of a human at those depths will vanish. And what's left behind are their pairs of shoes exactly as they were attached to the body.